There has been a lot of speculation lately about what the CPU market will look like next month. After AMD launches their third gen Ryzen processors based on a new microarchitecture and seven nanometer process technology, Intel, AMD's biggest and essentially their only competition on the CPU side of things, is still struggling to bring their next gen desktop parts to market, which will be based on a 10 nanometer process. Intel's 10 nanometer hardware has been teased since 2015, but has also been repeatedly delayed with a current expected launch in late 2019. Rather than berate Intel, Intel for letting AMD catch up or going off on how much better Ryzen 3000 series will be, which we won't truly know until the reviews come out at the beginning of July, I offer a solution. Intel needs another 2500K. Excellent! The Intel Core i5-2500K is a legendary CPU that was introduced on January 9th, 2011. It was based on Intel's Sandy Bridge architecture and manufactured using 32 nanometer lithography and sold for $216 per CPU if you bought a tray of 1,000 units. Retail prices were usually about $220 to $230, which put it right in the sweet spot for a mid-range gaming PC build. The 2500K had four cores, but no hyper-threading, so four threads as well. You had to pay another $100 plus for the 2600K to get eight threads in those days. Actually, Intel still charges you a heavy premium for hyper-threading, but more on that in just a bit. Under load, four cores would run at 3.3 to 3.4 gigahertz, and a single core would boost to 3.7 gigahertz, which wasn't too shabby. It also had a dual channel DDR3 memory controller and an iGPU, which was a new thing at the time. Intel HD Graphics 3000 integrated onto the die, sporting Gen 6 microarchitecture and 12 execution units, running it up to 1100 megahertz. Just make sure that your motherboard has video outs if you want to make use of that iGPU, and that means a Z68 board rather than P67. P67 was a weird chipset that didn't support video outs, but did support overclocking and also had a brief recall due to a bug with the SATA controller, but I don't want to go off on too much of a tangent about LGA 1155 motherboards, I mainly wanted to point out that Intel's motherboard lineup used to be even more confusing than it is today, and simplifying it would be a good thing. To wrap up my look back at the 2500K though, I want to point out two amazing things. It had just a 95 watt TDP, and the performance per watt at the time made even high-end desktop users jealous, simply due to its efficiency. And then finally, it being a 2500K meant that you could overclock, that's what the K means, on the end, by quite a bit actually, and also quite easily. If you had decent cooling, which which basically meant an OG $30 Cooler Master Hyper 212, you could literally just set the multiplier to 44 and have a stable long-term all-core OC to 4.4 gigahertz, well over a 20% bump from stock. This combination of efficiency and performance, as well as that bit of easily accessible extra sauce that you could get from overclocking, made the 2500K the go-to gaming CPU. And I know that there are quite a few of you out there who are still running the Sandy Bridge Champion today. And that long-term viability is something that also isn't often discussed. That means that the 2500K was even more of a value for the money. And here's where I think Intel has really lost the plot in recent years. They just went far too long without legitimate competition from AMD. I would say about 10 years from the late 2000s up until first gen Ryzen in 2017. And their CPUs just seemed to offer less and less value in the interim while performance plateaued. On top of that, they decided that four cores was enough for the mainstream market. Hyper-threading should cost you at least a $100 premium, and that platform longevity beyond one to two years was simply unnecessary. None of these choices were consumer friendly, and AMD has, in my opinion, pointed this out in glaring fashion with their competing mainstream Ryzen products for well over two years now. If Intel wants to win back gamers and PC enthusiasts, I think there are four things that they need to do with the new version of the 2500K, which I am advising them to make and sell as soon as possible. So first off, Intel, no more skimping on cores and threads. AMD has made hyper threading or simultaneous multi-threading a standard even at the lower end of their product stack and Intel needs to stop pretending that their hyper-threading tech is some magic price inflating unicorn. AMD has already listed the names, pricing, and specs of their 3000 series CPUs in the $200 to $250 price range that the 2500K successor should be living in. There is the Ryzen 5 3600X, which is a six core, 12 thread, 3.8 gigahertz to 4.4 gigahertz CPU with a 35 megabyte cache, 95 watt TDP, and $249 price tag. And then there's also the Ryzen 5 3600. It's also six cores and 12 threads, running at 3.6 to 4.2 gigahertz with a 65 watt TDP for one $199. Note that both of these are unlocked, so it's safe to assume that a savvy user could probably buy the $200 3600 and overclock it to just about equivalent performance to the 3600X. If you want more cores and threads, AMD is starting its 8-core, 16-thread lineup at $330 with the 3700X, just FYI. So there it is. Intel, you need to match AMD here with a 6-core, 12-thread CPU. Nothing less will be acceptable in this price range. 
Next, I want a long-term or at least longer-term platform for Intel's next generation of desktop CPUs. By platform, I mean the motherboard and chipset lineup. AMD launched their Socket AM4 platform back in 2017 and promised to keep it viable through 2020. I think they've lived up to that promise with three generations of Ryzen CPUs living on the same platform, meaning that some users who invested in a 300 series motherboard back in 2017 will be able to drop in a new CPU in 2019 or 2020 with more cores and threads than expected without doing a complete system overhaul. I think there is value in that as well, and I would love to see Intel commit to something similar with a few generations of CPUs planned for the same socket motherboards. This would also be an improvement over the original 2500K, which had two generations of motherboards in its LGA 1155 socket, Z68 originally, and then Z77. These were launched in 2011 and 2012. Next is frequency and overclocking, which are becoming more and more important for Intel, especially if the third gen Ryzen specs that we have seen so far are consistent consistent. Higher frequency directly impacts instructions for clock performance, and IPC is where the battle has raged in the past couple years when comparing AMD and Intel. Given how much time they have been working on 10 nanometer, I'm really hoping that we'll see frequencies go beyond 5 gigahertz, especially with more advanced cooling. Ideally, the new 2500K would hit 4.5 to 5 gigahertz at stock, giving it a head start over the Ryzen 3000 series when it comes to frequency, and then also have the potential to go to 5.4 or 5.5 gigahertz if you want to spend some time overclocking or if you upgrade your cooling solution. Frequency isn't everything, of course, but I'd love to get back to that satisfying feeling of getting more for your money by just making a few tweaks to the UEFI, which is really what overclocking is all about. Finally, as is pretty much the case with I guess pretty much everything in the world, we need a good price. I think going back to the $220 or $230 cost of the original 2500K would be a good idea. It would actually undercut AMD's 3600X, and it's a really good price for a mid-range $1,000 build with plenty of budget left over for a GPU and other components. I think PC gamers are getting tired of feeling like they need to spend another $100 for more cores and then another $100 for hyper-threading, only to find that the CPU they want is now in the $400 to $500 price range when AMD is offering these specs and features for much less. Consider that the 8-core, 16-thread Intel 9900K right now is $495, while the AMD 2700X is $285, still with 8 cores and 16 threads, more than $200 cheaper. Yes, the IPC is better with the 9900K, but is it $200 better? Most gamers would rather just spend that money on a better GPU. So Intel, give us a this-is-all-you-need kick-ass CPU in the $200 to $250 price range and watch how much gamers will love you for. It. So that's my solution. In late 2019 or even early 2020, Intel needs to launch a 2500K Redux, a $220 bang for the buck overclocking beast with six cores, 12 threads, and a reasonable TDP at around 100 watts. Put it on a new platform with a new socket and let us know that you'll be using that platform for three years at minimum and then actually follow through on that. Also, uh, please don't call it the 2500K Redux or anything. Make a simplified product naming system for the new CPUs that doesn't confuse people. Oh, and also just one more thing. Uh, Intel, please update and improve your stock CPU cooler and go back to including it even with the k skew processors. Budget builds need CPU coolers too, and no cooler in the box with the CPU means you need to add $20 to $30 to the base price so that you can just get the system up and running. And that's pretty much all I have for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and let me know if you would buy this CPU or the theoretical new version of this CPU if Intel launched it, and if it would change your feelings about Intel at all, if you've been feeling negatively about them to any degree. Alternatively, if you think there's some other key features sure that this theoretical new CPU needs that I didn't mention, then let me know in the comments section below as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe this video while you're at it. We'll see you guys in the next one.